Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of On Top and Hot. I'm your host, John Zadar. Sometimes I look like I'm leaving a rave, other times I look like I'm going to a synagogue. <laughs> but in either case, I always bring you hot penny stocks. That's what I do on this show. I go out looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I do my research looking for these hot stocks to share with you by going to the charts first. I look for charts that have heat. When I find a chart that has a lot of volume coming in or a breakout setup, then I go looking through the press releases and the filings, trying to find something to set that chart on fire. When I find a catalyst to match a hot chart, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And I've got some of those to share with you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is C-Tech Ventures, ticker S-E-A-V. She's got a nice strong chart. She was running back in July, hit a nice high, came back down, she bounced. That was back to the beginning of this month and she's been climbing ever since. And she just had big news come out. She made a deal that is gonna change her financials in a very big way. So SCAV finished today just a smidge over 53 cents and at 51.5% gains today. She's on the pink tier, she is current. She's got all those green ticks we like to see a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. That's validated information. Good as gold when you're trading a pink because pinks don't give you any validated information. They've also got independent directors listed over here which tells us they have plans to uplist. You may wanna go through their filings and see when they said that. So what is C-Tech Ventures all about? Well, they tell us here they're headquartered in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. They say they aspire to nurture and incubate emerging growth technology companies in Southeast Asia that aim to become tomorrow's Asia unicorns. Now this isn't a holdings company, it's an incubator company. The difference, holdings companies go out and acquire small businesses and help them to grow. Where incubators go out and find small ideas, innovative technologies, things that aren't in business yet, and help them to become a business and then turn them into a thriving company. They tell us here that we provide mentoring and consultancy on growth strategy through business combination and integration for companies to expand their businesses across Asia. We advise companies to monetize, capitalize, and scrutinize their businesses by providing funding strategy, which includes equity, crowdfunding, private placement, and go public. With your holding companies, they supply the money. With your incubators, they go find you the money. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Wow. Volume is low no matter which one you read. Average volume. 2.2 thousand shares a day for the last 30 days. It did triple today virtually up to 6.5 thousand. No, these are real small numbers, but the gains on the chart are real. Share structure for SCAV. Now this is exciting. Outstanding share count. We are at 92 and a half million. Look how many shares the insiders, the management own of that 92 million. 89.7 million. They are greedy for this company, not letting us have hardly any of it. All we get is 2.8 million shares. That's it, folks. The entire float is 2.8 million. It's a super duper low float. Now imagine if this company does, oh, I don't know, 10 million shares in a day. Well, they're going to have to sell all that they have on the market three times over, maybe four times. And that makes for a rising price real fast. Financials for SCAV. She's been growing steadily. Back in 2019, she was at $28,000. We got to bring three zeros down to any of the numbers here. And she's been growing steadily. 250,000, 383. Now she's over a half a million, 548,000. Quarterly, let's see what she's doing there. It's all over the place, 320,000 down to 15,000. She finished off the last quarter at $100,000. But as I said, the news we're gonna look at, this is chump change, don't even worry about this. Everything is about to change in a very big way. Disclosures for the company. 
Well, all we have is a financial that came out way uh, back in August the 14th. If you really want to know about the company, forget about Google, forget about trying to read all the news, just jump into a financial. They've got everything about the company from the day they were incorporated. So let's take a look at that news now. There is only, well, there's two pieces of news, but there really is only one piece because they're about the same thing. The most recent one came out July 18th. SeaTech Ventures signs acquisition agreement to acquire 100% of Just Supply Chain Limited. SeaTech Ventures Corp is pleased to announce the acquisition of Just Lorry. Just Lorry is a leading digital logistics, that's delivery, and supply chain management platform specializing in on-demand commercial trucks in Malaysia. The completion of this acquisition is just waiting for the finalization of the Just Lorry financial statements. They've got everything else done. All they need to do is get those financial statements in from Just Lorry and the deal is finished. Now they give us some good financials here for Just Lorry. In 2021, the company did $16.7 million. In 2022, look at that, $43.9 million. That is triple, folks, 300% increase. And all of this revenue is going to belong to this company, SeaTech, when this deal is completed. Sea is posed to revolutionize the digital logistics platform landscape in Southeast Asia. By strategically leveraging the strength of both companies, we are confident that we will strengthen our position as a market leader, extend our business into new regional territories, and achieve outstanding business results. Our goal of achieving tenfold growth will be realized through a well-balanced approach, combining organic expansion, strategic partnerships, and unwavering dedication to innovation and excellence. With the invaluable guidance and extensive regional network of SEEV, we are posed to surpass expectations and deliver exceptional outcomes. They got a lot of nice adjectives in there, folks. And did you catch that tenfold growth? Ten times, a thousand percent. That's what makes it a unicorn. So they've got a lot going on with this deal. They did not give us a date on when it's going to close. We know everything's been filed. We're just waiting for those financials to come in from Jess Lorry so we'll know what they're worth. Then it's a done deal. So we're waiting for it. And this came out in July. So it's got to be close. And the chart is already running. So now would probably be a good time to take a look at it. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's have some fun now. Let's do some charting. We're going to be using my free trading platform to do this charting on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform you get when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that's free too. So we are looking at SeaTech Ventures, ticker SEAV, and we're actually looking at a three-year, one-week chart so that you know where these supports and resistances are coming from. When we go down to the six-month, four-hour chart, you're not going to see any of this. It's flatlands over there. So we've got a very strong uh, support resistance up here. Let's call them SNRs. I like that. Supports and resistances, SNRs. And because I always get it confused, I should call this a resistance and I call it a support, but I call it an SNR. I'm never wrong. So we got an SNR up here. This is at $1.20. You can see a lot has been sitting on this up here. Then we've got some weaker SNRs coming down here. We've got one at a dollar three, one at 78, one at 70, and a very strong one we're banging our head on right now at 54 cents. Let's come on down to that six month, four hour view. As I said, flatlands, you wouldn't know where these resistances are coming from. They're just all the way back. So we got a low here of uh, double zero, four six. We hit this in May, then she took off from that low bubble, hitting a high here of 65 cents. Oh my God, folks, I can't even calculate the gains there from double zero four six to 65 cents. Uh, I think that's like 150,000% gains. If you had had $100 in back here in May, on this day, July 20th, you would have had yourself $150,000 for every $100 bill you invested back there. 
Oh my God, that is mind blowing. So she hit this high. She fell back to her 50 day SMA right here at 17 cents. She did this on the very first day of September. And as I said, she has been climbing all month. She had one very strong down poke here, which shouldn't scare you. I tell you, these are pillars. When they go all the way down through a strong SMA and then come right back up to where they started from, that is a support holding up the highway it's floating on. And it is floating on the nine day SMA and that gave it support. This is beautiful, folks. We did have strong volume back here. Right now, the volume is strong compared to back here, but nothing super strong. It's just strong. <laughs> Oscillators are looking real good. Our PPO, this is my percentage price oscillator, very much like my MACD. You read them the same. You want the blue line on top of the other line and you want them climbing. Both are doing that, looking outstanding. And our RSI, she was in the overbought, fell down hard and she's right up underneath the overbought right now at 69.7. 20 day, one hour view. Well, that's an uphill trend for the entire chart. She started down here at uh, 16 and a half cents, actually fell below that, hitting this low of 15 cents to put in that pillar, came right back up, bounced off the 50, nice strong support, and went back to climbing. She's pushing down every now and then, but you got to give a little bit, folks. She just can't go green, 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 green forever. One red spike every now and then, that's beautiful. Osculators, they're still looking luscious. PPO is climbing evenly. MACD is climbing, all green bars, nothing light shaded, and our RSI is even keeled at 61 right now. And looking at our five day, five minute view, 15 cents is our low here, 15 cents, and it went to 55 cents. How many days was that? From the 19th to the 25th, six days, counting the weekend in the middle. So you had over 300% gains just there from last week to this week. She's been going sideways, took a drop down to the 20 and she's come right back up. Osculators, PPO is cool right now. She was climbing, but I mean, she's as flat as can be. So is our MACD and our RSI is pulling back just a smidge, but she just had big news. Her revenues are gonna go from $100,000 to, I don't know, $43 million. What an increase. She's got increases on the board going from double zero up to 65 cents. She's got right here in 20 days, five days from 15 cents to 55 cents. This is producing a lot of gains for people right now, folks. She is at least worth a watch. S-E-A-V. I'm liking her. She is pss, hot. Our next penny stock is a mining company but that's not all they do. This is Star Alliance International, ticker STAL. Now her chart is what you would call a early stage atypical breakout chart. She is breaking out through the 50 right now, but the 200 still a ways away, though it's in the neighborhood. What really drew my attention to this chart was the volume growth. She was taking these huge jumps, getting bigger and bigger. So I ran over here praying I was gonna find a catalyst to match this hot chart. Boy, was I happy to see news came out today about a big merger deal. So STAL finished today at 0.0022 with 10% gains. She is on the pink tier. She is current. She's only got one of those green ticks though, the transfer agent verified. We don't have a verified profile. Not a deal breaker, but being a pink, we would like to get as much validated information as we could. So what is Star Alliance about? Well, as I said, they do do mining, but they do two other things as well. They tell us here that Star Alliance is a global holdings company with strong assets in the U.S., Honduras, Guatemala, and Nigeria. Star's assets include gold mines in California and Honduras and gold and lithium mines in Nigeria. In addition, the company owns a new innovative technology that is eco-friendly. It has already been designed and built in Guatemala, and they're going to market this to gold mine companies. The technology is called Genesis, and it helps extract gold in a much easier way. A lot of people are going to be interested in that. And the third thing they do is called Baratex Technology. Baratex Technology is a 
fiber that is made from volcanic rock. It is incredibly light, stronger than steel, wood, carbon fiber, fiberglass, aluminum, even stronger than Kevlar. But get this, it's biodegradable. Made from volcanic rock and it's biodegradable. This product can be used in many everyday applications. So they got a lot of things going on right now. Plus, they got a merger, which is something completely different. So what was the relative volume around the company today? That's what we want to see. An increase, a nice increase, about 500% going from 3.3 million to 15.4 million. Share structure for Stal. Outstanding share count. We got 280 million shares. Insiders got most of them, 167 million shares, which leaves us a float of 112 million. Not a bad float, but not a low float. Just your everyday average float. Financials for Stal, we got nothing on the annual. We got nothing on the quarterly. That's why this news is important. It should change their financials. Funny thing is, though, they don't talk about money in it at all. We just see them expanding into a lot of countries. Checking out the company's disclosures. We don't have anything here, and their most recent financial was for March. That came out in May. They are late. Now, they haven't been marked for it. They're not in hot water right now, but they are overdue. They need to bring out that last financial for June. That needs to come out ASAP. All right, let's jump on over to that news now. Not a whole lot of news here either. We've got two pieces of news. One came out in July. They moved their head office over into Nevada. And then we had a piece of news that came out today, September 26th. Star Alliance International agrees to purchase AI English OTG. The company has agreed to purchase 51% of AI English OTG. AIE has built an artificial intelligence platform ready for immediate release. The company synthesizes AI with its user experience and interface design into a highly personalized, enjoyable, and user-friendly learning experience. The programming uses 20 unique proprietary engines to capture and analyze the behavior and user data from millions of users with the program learning as the system grows. This empowers the AI platform to provide high quality teaching on huge scale across the globe. The interaction data between the user, learner, and the AI is analyzed in real time and turned into an algorithm that is unique to each and every individual. AIE's platform will provide real-time translation in 60 languages. AI has already developed distribution systems and partners across 15 countries throughout Asia, Latin, and North America, with another 17 countries in the process of being activated. The markets in Asia and Latin America have potential audiences of over 3 billion non-English speaking people. The product will be launched in these countries in October of this year. We're just looking at a week from now, folks. It's going to start to be launched. And in a nutshell, the company's product solves the global teacher shortage. AI being teachers. What a concept. So they're involved with mining. They have their invention genesis to help gold miners retrieve gold more quickly. They have their biotechs, biotrex, whatever it's called. They're Volcanic rock fiber, stronger than Kevlar. And now they've got this deal going on as well. And the chart is hot. Can you think of a reason not to at least be looking at this company? I can't either. Let's go check out that chart. Well, if I don't keep a move on, we're going to end up looking at a stall. <laughs> this is ticker S-T-A-L that we're looking at. This is Star Alliance. This is a one-year, one-day chart. Our 52-week high where she almost touched the 200 and hasn't come near it since was back in November, about 31 cents. And then it was September 12th, we had an ultra low of 001. Coming down to our six-month, four-hour view, six months ago, we had a high of almost six cents. And then you can see right around that low bubble, all of our volume has started to grow. Look at these huge, long spikes. 
That's what drew me into looking at this. Now, you really can't see much here until I focus in on it, but you can see she's starting to move. We're catching this early. The news just came out today. So she hit that low bubble back about 10, 12 days ago, worked her way across most of the SMAs, nice tall wick going through our 50 day and came right back to where she started from. That's a token sign, a directional intentional spike. Pierce it with a big wick, come back to where you started from and get ready to run. This is looking nice, folks. Oscillators, PPO is just about ready to have a crossover. Our MACD is just about ready to cross the signal line, that strong line right there. RSI is on a tumble right now. She has fallen from 62 down to 51. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So our high back here of uh, 0059, underneath the 50-day, down to that low bubble, was down there for quite a few days before she broke through the 50 just three days ago. And it wasn't until today that she actually rock and rolled. She pushed up, got through the 200, one little spike. It's not a big one, but it does show initiative. It shows intention. She came back down higher than where she started, right? That's a token sign as well. It's all right if she rolls back. It is that initial fallback. As long as she doesn't come lower, things are looking good. She's coming back down probably to the 20 or the 50 day, and hopefully she's going to bounce off. Our oscillators, well, with these red bars, everything is kind of coming down right now. Five day, five minute. Low bubble, double zero one, slowly working her way up, steady and methodically. And then today she ripped. The news came out, right? So she jumped here. Let me see. She dropped. As soon as the bell, she dropped down to 0013 and went up to 5. Wow. So you can think of that as like going from 13 to 50. So you're looking at 350, 380% run right there, folks. Holy cow. Then she came down, landed on the 9 day, was looking promising, lost her footing. Not only did she fall under the 9, the 20, the 50, and look what we got here a brand new SMA. Now, I'm always suspicious that the price is going to go to the new SMA because I see it happen over and over. And that's what's happening right now. The price is going directly to that 200-day SMA. Sometimes they stick there. Sometimes they just hit it and go right back to what they were doing. But again, this news just came out today. This was the initial pop. Maybe more news is going to come out. I don't know. But the chart shows signs of breaking out. The volume is very strong. The volume was coming before the news came out. So what's in play here? I think it's worth putting STAL on your watch list. Absolutely do. Last ticker we're taking a look at. Another hot pink. This is COSK. Ticker K-O-S-K. One step vending. Now, the first two companies we looked at were doing mergers and acquisitions. This company tells us there is a change coming. They're not going to keep doing what they've been doing. They're moving into a new sector. But they never mention the word merger. They never mention the word acquisition. They say change is coming, and we're going to be telling you about it on a weekly basis. Well, I'm okay with that. <laughs> That leaves a lot of speculation. OTC traders love to speculate, and they're going to give us news on a weekly basis. Keep that chart fed so it can keep climbing. I'm all for it. So that's why we're looking at COSK. We've got a hot chart, we've got hot news, and we've got a steady line of news coming. COSK finished the day just under three cents, 2.8 cents, and she was up 3.7% today. She's on the pink tier in current, and she's got both those green ticks we're always talking about. So she's looking real good. Now, the description doesn't matter because that's not what they're doing anymore. They're going to be doing something completely different. Relative volume for the company. Woo, what a big, bad drop today. Ow, dropping from 3.7 million down to under a million. Now, the volume was severely low today. The market took a beating. Bloomberg noticed it. In case you weren't on the market today, take my word for it. It was a bloody market. So we lost a lot of volume on COSK today. Share structure for COSK. We have about a half a billion shares in our outstanding share count, 541 million. Again, the insiders, the management, they own the lion's share, 358 million. 
which leaves us afloat, not the best afloat, but not the worst, 182 million. Financials for Cosk. Well, they've got nothing on the annual and they've got nothing on the quarterly. So maybe change was a real good thing for them. Looking at the disclosures for the company, wow, look at that. 2011 is the last filing outside of their financials that they have ever put out. Hmm. Jumping on over to that news then. So really, the only news we have this year, all of this news from here back is something else, and that's what they used to do, so we're not going to look at it. But all of it here is about them changing operation and changing their name. That's all the news is about. And I've got a couple pieces here so that we can get an idea. One Step Bending Core announces change of business sector to gas and oil. They tell us that the company is moving forward with the change of its current business model to the business sector of gas and oil. That's all we really know. No words about mergers or where they're going to be. The company will release information weekly based on the developments in the process of the upcoming changes. We appreciate that. And that other piece of news came out September 21st. They tell us here that they are changing their name to Meta Wells Oil and Gas. They're going to keep the same ticker. All they need to do now is file with FINRA and the company transfer agent and the name will be changed and complete. They have a website they're currently putting up and this is going to reflect the new and upcoming changes to the company, which they need to do something because they're not making any money right now. Now, the chart was really hot back in July. Hopefully, she's got that same sort of enthusiasm. She went way down, came back up, and she's looking good right now. We're now taking a look at One Step Vending, ticker KOSK. This is a six-month, four-hour view. I could show you the yearly, but it would just be six more months of stuff like that. Not a lot going on. Not until recently here. She hit this low bubble in July at the beginning, double zero one eight and then right here at the end of July she started to grow and she went all the way to halfway through August now she was down here at double zero two three and went up here to three point four cents now to make this easy to comprehend take away all the zeros what you would read is 23 went to 339 Almost 1,500% gains right there, folks. And look at that volume. It was incredible. She did finally come all the way down here to about uh, one and a half cents, hit the 50-day, bounced off of that, went sideways for quite a while. Looks like she was waiting for the 50-day to come to her since she went to it. It's only fair it come to her. Once it got there, she laid on it. You see that? She just laid on it for about four days, and now she's popped, and she's starting to run. Though we don't see a whole lot of extra volume down here right now. Our oscillators, well, our PPO is pushing off right now. It is a little, but it is positive motion. Same is going on with our MACD. It is very little, but it is above the signal line, above the other line, and it is pushing up, though it's tough to see. Our RSI is coming down right now, and she is at a cool 52. I don't like to see it any less than 55. Looking at our 20-day, one hour, well, the 200 looks nice. I'll give you that. From one corner up here, this is looking beautiful. Our price is rolling around really just going sideways. It looks like it was waiting for the 200 to come to it rather than her come down to it. We had a low here of one and a half cents. She hit that high of 3.2 cents, and right now we are at 2.8. And she's above her 50. She's above her 200. She doesn't look bad. She looks like she's going to do another bounce right now. Osculators, they're a bit cool. Our PPO, it's a little plancid, but it's above the line, just like our MACD. Everything looks like it is dipping a little bit right now, and our RSI says that's what's happening. It's cooled down even more, down to 51. Looking at our five day, five minute. So we've got a low over here of 2.3 cents. She bounced up over top of that 50, dipped and then jumped. And she jumped from, uh, where was that? 2.4 up to 3.1 and she's fallen back right on top of the 20, which doesn't look bad at all. The chart isn't as strong as we'd like to see, but it is strong. It has heat. The SMAs are going in the right direction. We've got big news. We've got teasing 
news. They haven't given us enough information for us to know a whole lot more than they're going to be in oil and gas, and they've changed their name. Outside of that, we got to wait for more news, and that's what we're hoping for. If they will be true to their word, that could keep this stock running, especially if they give us something important. Cosk, it could be a surprise breakout at any moment. The other stocks have got hot charts. They got mergers and acquisitions we're waiting on as well. We don't know when any of these are going to close. So these may not run tomorrow or the next day, but they may. And that's why I tell you to put them on your watch list. When you see the volume coming in, normally something good is happening. But remember, it doesn't always take volume. Watch the price too. You see the price start rising? You've had a heads up on what's going on. You can't know too much, folks. DD is your friend. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.